What's going on guys, Alpha the Wizard back at it with another video. Today we are continuing the Meta Breaking Podcast and we have a special guest. We have Yasin. Yasin, how are you doing today? Dude, I'm great. How about you, my man? Fantastic. Can't complain. So we have a lot of great changes coming in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. You know, we've been in this format. It's almost like a tier zero format, some like to say, you know, for quite some time. And um, yeah, we got some big events coming up. So I thought it would be a good idea to just, you know, touch on, you know, a few different topics on what to expect and, you know, all the great changes coming. So, you know, to kick things off, you know, how do you think tier elements is going to fare, like, you know, with Mexico coming up? Okay, so it's going to be pretty interesting because Mexico, I think, is going to be the first YCS with Photon Hypernova. And that means that tier elements is going to have access to more cards, but they're also going to have, uh, well, they're going to be against a new kind of kryptonite for them in a way. Just like Flunderese is a deck that is kind of built to beat tier elements. I want to say Pure Kashtira is also in a way kind of designed to beat it. Uh, not really because they have like an inherently good matchup against Tier Laments, but because they are just another shifter deck. And that is something that Tier Laments is going to have to be prepared for. But with enough deck building, you might be able to kind of circumvent those issues. And because of the fact that Tier Laments is going to be getting a huge boost with the new Kashtira cards, the deck is actually going to be getting better, if anything, and not worse. So if it's tier zero right now, I want to say it might become like tier negative one with the new support. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's actually really funny. Um, cause I do agree myself because, you know, tier limits was already tier zero. So it's just like, you know, they're just giving, adding, you know, gasoline to the fire. So, you know, yeah. giving us the new tier limits cash tier, the card is really exciting. I know I'm personally excited for it. Um, now, how do you feel about Cash Tira? Do you think the deck will maybe be like second best deck? Maybe like better than Sprite or what are your thoughts? Uh, honestly, it's a it's a gimmicky deck, but it's a good deck. So it, it reminds me a bit of Runic Sprite as in it clearly has the weakness of not having a battle phase. But even though it has that weakness, it's not really like you can do too much about it. Like... Okay, sure, they have to, like, almost pass turn the next turn, but they're just generating so much advantage. And the thing about Kashtira, the their main weakness is that all their monsters have high levels, so they don't really, you know, they, they kind of do nothing if you give them, like, a monster with, like, Ibli or something. They have to, you know, kind of just commit to, like, weird plays in order to just out the monster on the board. So they have these kind of weaknesses, but when the deck works, it works. And it can protect itself. Well, the Shangri-La can protect itself from like Regeki and stuff like that by detaching material. So if you don't have the right cards to beat Kashtira, uh, you will most likely lose. But if you're, if you know what exactly what you're doing, you can actually beat Kashtira extremely easily. So Kashtira is that kind of deck where I think at the very beginning will catch people off guard and do really, really well, way better mm -hmm. than it should. And then uh, you know maybe a few weeks going into the format. I think uh, Sprite might maybe uh, just overtake it, but I think at first, Kashtira is going to be a little better. Yeah, and you definitely raised like a whole nother topic that changes deck building entirely, and that is Ibli. So with yeah. Ibli creeping in people's decks, especially in Kashtira, that definitely eliminates a lot of the outs that would inherently just deal with Kashtira, like evenly matched or, you know, you mentioned like Regeki Darkhole, you know, they have like, you know, Shangri-La to protect. Um, Ibli yeah. is seeming like it's going to be um, a threat, to be quite honest. Now, yeah. um, but my question is, is it real? Do you think people are actually going to be playing Ibli in Kashtira? Is it something we need to prepare for? Or, you know, is it just that variance matchup you might just see like once out of a YCS? Well, it's rather people uh, playing Ibli against Kashtira because in Kashtira there is no synergy really. But Ibli could theoretically be played in like Tier Lamance or Sprite. Well, obviously in Sprite, but uh, Sprite Gishki potentially. Uh, anything that utilize, utilizes the Sprite engine. Uh, Tier Lamance could kind of still do it because some people like uh, Patrick Hoban and Chris LeBlanc have been doing it actually. Uh, so as long as you can play, you know, Sprite Elf, Sprite Sprint, uh, Gigantic and stuff like that, it's really not hard to give like an Ibli to your opponent. And in the OCG, we've seen something that was uh, 
Better and worse than Ibli, it was a Mushroom Man, I think number two or something. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> technically, the effect is worse than Ibli, but the difference is that it can't really be turned into a Link 1, whereas Ibli can. But that doesn't really matter because Kashtira, their main issue would be having a monster on the field. So uh, if you can prevent them from crashing the Mushroom Man or linking off using like another monster, so if you can deal with the normal summon, that's really, really big. You should be fine. However, one thing that I will say is that if you give them the Mushroom Man instead of the Ibli, they can, um, well, they can still special summon other monsters from uh, with other means because Ibli straight up prevents any other special summon. And even if you give them the Ibli, they can still normal summon Kashtira monsters while attributing by using Birth. That's true. Now, um, mm -hmm. Kashtira just seems like a very interesting deck. Like, I've tried it myself, and it does seem, you know, really, really interesting. And a lot of the people that I test with, you know, shout out to Jib, you know, he's, like, one of the main people who tried this, like, with the whole Ibli thing. I didn't even know this was, like, a thing moving into this format until he was playing Kashtira, and he gave me Ibli, and I'm looking at it evenly matched in my hand, like, um... Well, I don't have an out for this. <laughs> yeah. You know, but with all that being said, you know, I do think there are some, like, you know, outs um, per se to, like, the Kashtira board that also deal with other matchups like Fluwanda Reese, you know, even the Mirror match potentially. And, you know, and they're cards that have been gaining a lot of popularity, um, such as, like, Book of um eclipse we have like book of lunar eclipse which i think is highly underrated i look at it like a twin twister type of card yeah you know it yeah. has a hefty cost but it deals with two big problems what are your takes on those kind of cards okay so book of eclipse is probably the better card because it's a quick play so it can be used on the opponent's turn but the issue is that they are they're going to be drawing cards up to the amount of monsters that you flipped on their field uh, if they're under pot of prosperity they're not drawing anything and another thing is that uh, it's because of the fact that also, again, it's a quick play, it's flexible, you can use it on your draw phase, on your own standby phase. Uh, you can Book of Eclipse your own Ibli if they give it to you, uh, which I don't think is really going to come up, but whatever, it's something that you can do. But the issue with Book of Eclipse, I don't think it's like super important, but it it is Ashable because it makes your opponent draw cards. And that is the reason why we started seeing play uh, was starting seeing uh, Swords of Concealing Light getting play in oh, yeah. the OCG. So that's the safer Book of Eclipse. Uh, it can be dealt with with like Cosmic Cyclone, but nobody really plays the card. So people would rather respect the Book of Eclipse than Swords of Concealing Light. And that one doesn't make your opponent draw anything at all. So there's really no drawback whatsoever. Yeah, 100%. And that was... Um... When I was testing with, you know, my good friend Justin the other day, you know, we were running the options between Eclipse and um, Lunar Eclipse because Lunar Eclipse does seem, you know, quite nice in, in comparison just because, like you had previously mentioned, um, Book of Eclipse can be ashed. So that's devastating if you try to go to break their board. And Kashtira lists that I've seen so far are playing like ash. So it's like if they ash you and they have their full end board, it's just there's nothing you can really do. But then, you know, you have Lunar Eclipse at Book it like it's also like the quick play you know it book of moons them and it doesn't flip them face up so it's like i feel like it, it's it might be a decent option going first or second um eclipse i definitely have had some issues with it myself kind of like as you mentioned um but the good thing is you know tying into what you said it is a quick play so as compared to like swords of concealing light you know you know, they might not be fully prepared for Swords of Concealing Light either, though, now that I think about it, because they might be expecting their cards to get booked. But I just wonder, I wonder if, you know, it makes you really, really wonder when we get these top cut lists, if these lists will be playing these cards, you know? My prediction is that they won't, actually. No? I think people are just going to be playing the generic cards, like the triple... Tax, uh, ta ta tactics card. There, there are two of them. I just get mixed up. But yeah, the the triple cards. People are gonna be playing tasking and talents, and they're gonna be playing like whatever lightning storm. Well, probably not, but maybe forbidden droplet. Dark ruler is a good one actually. Uh, it's and gonna that, start seeing play again. That kind of raises another topic as well. Um, that I wanted to touch on. So with the release of triple tactic tasking coming out how much of an impact do you think this card will have? Because it's not main phase dependent. Yeah, so the nice thing about not being main phase dependent is that if your opponent uses the effect of Shangri-La on your standby phase to summon a monster from the deck, 
that immediately turns on your tasking and your opponent controls a monster. So in other words, you can use any searched normal spell or trap card right away, which means that evenly is live and you can search evenly, which is filthy. That means that you can literally sight in one evenly. And if you have like triple tasking, then you're fine. You're going to see it 39% of the time. No, actually 40 something because it would be a uh, four copies. Uh, you could also search Dark Ruler, like I said, or Imperm, even if you have like no specific options. If you want to just main deck the card, you can search Triple Tactic Talents if your opponent uses uh, uh, the effect of a monster on the main phase. Or you can search uh, Change of Heart, which I actually love. I think Change of Heart is finally going to start seeing play again. Yes. Because if you, can steal, if you can steal your opponent's Cash Tira monster, you can get your own engine going. And your opponent uses the effect um, of Shangri-La that turn, so you can go into a Rise Heart attack and then make a Zeus, get rid of everything your opponent has. I love it. Honestly, Change of Heart is my favorite spell card of all time. So when this card came off the list, I was like, this has to be good somehow. And if not, it will have its format. <laughs> this might just this, be the, this format. Is the format. Yeah, this I is finally the format for Change of Heart. So that also kind of like raises up another um, question in terms of deck building. So if people are playing cards like Mind Control and Change of Heart with Tasking, do you think it would be a viable option for as a tier elements player to maybe have like an Arise Heart in your extra deck? Absolutely. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm really it's glad that Zeus. you even mentioned that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Arise Heart and Zeus. So uh, you can summon Arise Heart with any Kashtira monster, basically, even Fenrir. So if you just play like Tier Laments Kashtira, which is searchable by Kid Kalos, and that's searchable by the field spells, the, the two of them, so the uh, Parezos as well as the uh, Perlarino, you can immediately summon a Zeus in like two seconds with no effort whatsoever. So free. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so there's just like so many like deck building options that we have presented to us. Like I know me personally, like I'm a Tier Elements player, you know, I love Sprite as well, but like, you know, I definitely just kind of like use my brain in terms of what deck has the higher power level and like, you know, I just run with that. However, um, you know, while testing the Arise Heart, I've noticed like it only ever comes up in the Cash Tira matchup. So if we don't play like, let's say we maybe we play one Cash Tira matchup, the whole YCS, can we justify having that slot in our extra deck? Um, Do you see what I mean? Yeah, 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 I definitely do see what you mean. I think it's still... It, it really does depend on what your deck building strategy is, too. Because you're also not trying to, like, lose to, like, everything else. You know, so... if I want... I, I usually say when you play a card that is, like, try, like, pretty much built to, like, beat one deck, it's really nice if it can have utility against the other decks, too. Exactly. I 100% agree with that. And this similar question was something I thought about when I saw Pac's most recent list from that online tournament where he was citing a Zeus, which I 100% agree with against um, Cash Tira because they can just rip your Zeus and you're kind of scrambling. Mm -hmm. But I also saw that he was um, sideboarding to Lingribo. And that was why I was kind of asking earlier about the Ibli thing. Is it real? Because if you play, let's say, an 11 round YCS and you don't run into Ibli at all, and then you just have these two Lingribos just sitting in your side deck and you're just like, I wish this was anything else. Nah, I, I don't. Th th this is like way too much on the extreme, though. I, I don't think this is going to come up like as often. So I think this is just not a sacrifice that you really have to do. I. At this point, I would just say, like, play two relevant cards that will come up, mathematically speaking, more often, so that you don't have to play, like, you know, too ably. So with that, sorry, being, with that being said, you know, how do you feel about Forbidden Droplets? Because that inherently, like, if you did run into Ibli, that's going to deal with it no matter what. And that can negate their Arise. Well, I guess they have to go uh, to the graveyard. Yeah, yeah, maybe Droplets wouldn't be it. This deck is just posing to be a threat, to be quite honest, you know? But again, you can uh, you can just still go with change of heart, book uh, well more mind control steal, and then link off or link two, and then <laughs> just so play from true. there. Yeah, so it's like any card just does it. Like you really don't have to play like weird things that just make your deck worse. So that's exactly what I said like thirty seconds ago. If you play a card that can serve a lot of utility on top of being like a very very good card for like one specific scenario, you're you're golden. Change of heart might be the way. 
Yeah. <laughs> but also, you know, with all this crazy cash Tira talk and Tira Elements being the best deck, do we still have to worry about Flu Wonderies? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's like we have to worry only because people are going to be lazy and not want to learn Kashtira and like the new format. So they'll play Flunderies because they have, they know nothing else, but it's not going to be like a better deck than Kashtira at all. As a matter of fact, Flunderies has like a 0% win rate against Kashtira. It's, it's really bad. <laughs> Even if they go first, they do nothing. The Wind Bear statue is useless because... Unicorn is a wind, so that's a nice deck you got there. <laughs> <They can't laughs> that's actually play. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> the wind burst statue isn't even an, uh, an insta win. What are they going to do? Rise up, bounce back my unicorn? Okay, a special summon again. That's a nice deck you got. There. I don't even need my normal summon, so that's a nice field spell you got there. If I go first and I make a rise heart, every single time one of your flunderies gets banished, I equip it underneath so you get zero recursion whatsoever. Oh it's catastrophic. Flunderies cannot win against Kashtira. If you're watching this and you're a Flunderies player, you have a few weeks to prepare and learn another deck. If you want to play a <laughs> deck, go ahead and learn Kashtira, but do not play Flunderies. It sucks. Word of advice. <laughs> friend to friend. Zero in top cut. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's going to be like one in top cut because he got lucky and drew Shifter, Robina, Eagle, and Field Spell every single game. It's, yeah. Uh, I, mean, I guess... Yeah. I guess the reason why I was mainly wondering is just because the simple fact, you know, as much as like, you know, I have my strong opinions on Fluanderese, like I'm not a fan of the deck. However, you know, if that's the deck that, you know, one of my friends chooses to play, you know, obviously I support them. However, if you look at the stats on Fluanderese, uh, I think it's like the last three YCSs. It's literally been or maybe even four YCSs. It's been in like the finals of like yeah. a lot of these YCSs. So Flunderies is making it very, very far, which actually surprised me every single time because I didn't think it would make past top 16. But, you know, I stand corrected. I think it's logical. I mean, uh, the reason why Flunderies is doing better is because everybody is just so focused on tier laments and less focused on Sprite. But if we saw more Sprite, we would have less Flunderies. It's uh, kind of like a balanced thing. It's a... It's a it's, it's a paradox in a way. Like the more tier elements we have, the more flunderies we have. And then, you know, the more uh, sprite we have, the less flunderies we have. But also we're going to have more tier elements because tier elements counters sprite because they suck in a way. They kind of lose to dark ruler. <laughs> so it's like, it's the format's really weird. Like I remember when we first got tier elements and sprite in like the same set, uh, people were not playing hand traps. They were playing board breakers instead. And board breakers were insane against Sprite, but garbage against Tier Laments. And then people started adapting and doing the exact opposite. Zero board breakers, a bunch of hand traps. And that's what we're seeing in Sprite, actually. They're playing, like, what, 15 hand traps? Zero oh, yeah. board breakers. It's very interesting. And I wonder if Sprite will survive, like, through this, you know, mini evolution. Because, you know, that actually was going to be, like, another topic that I was going to bring up. Is like, you know, how do you feel about the Bistules moving into Photon? Because I noticed, like, some people were playing them. But then you almost just, like, guarantee lose game one to, like, Cash Tira players. And I feel like as a deck builder, like, you want to optimize your deck for winning game ones. Because that's, like, the most important game. Yeah, uh, so you brought a very good point. Uh, the Kashtira monster is exactly, uh, sorry, the Tier Laments monster is, uh, sorry, the Bestials, oh my god. Exactly as you you're said, okay. do nothing against Kashtira, but they're really good against Tier Laments. But if you're, even if you use it against Tier Laments, they can still recover from it. Like if they play Unicorn and Fenrir, so the Fenrir will be able to banish your Bestial. So you start with no monsters on the field, and then the Unicorn will look at your extra deck, make you lose one card. And then when you use another monster on your own turn, you lose like the second copy of a card. So if you play two Kid Kalos, then you lose the game. And uh, what else? I mean, you're, like I said, losing every single game one against Flunderies and Kashtira. That is not the play. So just like you said, I would side deck the Bestial monsters. I would not main deck them. Yeah, and I can definitely agree with that because I had this, you know, similar conversation with one of my good friends who's a very good deck builder, and he was stating, no, I think Bistials are still the way because if tier elements is tier zero, we got to be most prepared for the best deck. And while I do agree to an extent, like, I'm looking at it from a logistical tournament perspective, you know, if we're playing 11 rounds and I play against six mirror matches, you know, what are those other matchups? Am I losing game yeah. one in those matchups? You know, it's just, it's a weird, 
weird thing, you know. Losing game one to Kashtira makes me really uneasy because I could be going first on game two and then just get like sphere moded into evenly into full combo. And that's just not something I'm comfortable with. So I want to be winning game one at all cost. And then, you know, game two, whatever worst case I lose. And then game three, I absolutely have to win again. But yeah, game one is just like the only way to like secure like, you know, a safe uh spot in you know winning the match and true laments i think i can deal with by technical play and by better side decking so oh, yeah. game one yeah I'd, I'd rather have a perfect main deck to beat every to beat true laments at like a reasonable rate and then beat the other decks at a very very good rate because the you know a tier zero deck even though it will see the most amount of play in a ycs People are also going to be doing the exact opposite of playing the the tier zero deck, which means play the best deck to counter the tier zero deck. So if you're just like another sheep to the slaughter and just trying to, you're just going to be dest getting destroyed by people who literally spent months building a strategy to beat you, and you don't want that. I can 100% agree with that. Yeah, it's just so weird because that with bestials not being played, and most people were playing anywhere from like seven to like all nine of them, and um, moving into this new format, if they're cutting bestials all together, that changes the whole deck building mechanic from what we're used to of tier elements, if you really think about it. Because it's just like, do we play Beatrice? Do we play Wallow? We could probably cut those cards for like maybe Asa and maybe like the Arise Heart, possibly. Um, but yeah, it definitely like we're losing elements as well, but then adding like, you know, more millers. So it's, it's kind of like a weird balance in a way. Yeah. It's pretty interesting where uh, people are technically could be playing upwards of 12 bestials, although I absolutely do not recommend it. Uh, you know, Baldrick is a really good one, but if you're yeah. not playing a lot of pistols, Baldrick ends up being not the best. If you only draw Baldrick and nothing else going second, it kind of doesn't do anything. It ends up being just like Saronir. <laughs> you know, Saronir yeah. is just, yeah, it's that kind of hand trap that you play just because you just want more bestials. But unless you're playing like a branded strategy, it has like no other effect. Mm, okay. Now, I did want to ask your opinion on a particular card that I've seen popping up quite recently. And that card is Cyberstein. So many people are hyping this card up because it's so free, but it's very hefty cost. What, what, what's your yeah. takes on Cyberstein? So, if you're only getting Valored on a Cyberstein, or I mean, rather Imperm, because nobody's going to play Valor, it has like no good matchups, you're going to be able to still extend with any Sprite Extender or like anything else that you're playing in your deck. I think it could make sense to play maybe in like Kashtira as well, but it's that random one of that you have to sack and I don't know, like what deck are you <laughs> realistically using Cyberstein in? So I just don't understand. It's yeah. cute, but you pay 5,000 and if it gets negated and destroyed, that was like, you, you did nothing productive. Nothing exactly. at all. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of people's perspective on it was, you know, it's a free kit or if you've already went combo and you mill it and you can elf it back, you know, you can make like just like a free Drago or it can give you that missing level four you need for Dweller or Redoer. Um, I I definitely agree. I think it's just like a Saki one of, but uh, and especially with Dark being in the format, Dark is like one of the best Link monsters that has came out in a while. So it's like, mm -hmm. in my opinion, so it's like, just being able to dark take a Cyberstein like, <laughs> in a tier yeah. mirror, it's like nice Cyberstein, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's that. Oh, by the way, that's another reason why I don't think main decking bestials is clever at all. Yeah, it's um, what if you mill Magnemote and then they go dark, revive back their uh, your Magnemote and then search their Druid Worm? Yeah, you're screwed. Or even taking Baldrake, you know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, yeah, anything. And then they have a level six extender. They make Beatrice or Wallow or ah. I don't think Wallow is going to be seeing play. I don't think Beatrice either is going to be seeing play at all. But yeah, I mean, so, anything can happen. So one of the last things that I wanted to touch on was um, the Ishizu cards. So this is a very interesting topic. 
among yeah. many different friend groups because everybody has different perspectives, different opinions, and I'm just gonna touch on a personal experience that I've recently had. So this whole time playing uh, Tier Elements, we've been in this format for quite some time now, and I've been kind of just playing like the maxed out with one Agito, you know, and it's been working fine, and then I've tried cutting the Agito, and then this past weekend, I had a regional and I was analyzing the last three winning YCS lists and I was like, they all have something in common. They're playing Orange Light and three Agito. Yes. And I was like, you know what? I'm I'm sold. I'm going to try this, okay? And I played one Bistio in my entire deck and that was the Druus Worm just because of Dark and yep. three Agito and Orange Light. And I will tell you, not only was Orange Light like God tier, but Agito came up in so many instances that it just won me games. And I'm curious to hear your opinion. Moving into this new format, how do you think the Ashizu ratios are going to change? They will decrease outside of maybe Caldo, maybe Kalbeck, but Agito will not see play at more than one. And Mudora might start seeing play at two. I think this is where someone has to clip me because <laughs> if I say that and I end up being wrong, I'll make a fool out of myself or, or the other way uh, around too. You know, the other the other thing could happen where I'm completely right. But I don't think the Ishizu cards really line up too well against the Kashtira cards. That's my issue because they all focus on milling cards, just like the Tier Lament. So if you're playing a deck that does one thing and one thing alone, and you go up against a Rise Heart, you lose the game. That's it, that's all. Whereas yeah. if you play, you know, if you play a bunch of Kashtira cards, you can win going second against Kashtira. It's funny, but Kashtira's worst nightmare is like themselves in a way. Yeah, one good thing I like about Kashtira, and I was testing last night, and this came up for the first time, is I made Baguska into their board, and I was maxing out a Shizu's too, because I was just testing it. And um, yeah, I made Baguska, and I'm like, have fun, bro. Yeah, well, he summoned the Scareclaw cash tier and was able to just beat over Baguska. <laughs> no way. Because it can attack in oh defense mode. Oh my god. That... <laughs> That's just so convenient. I was like, wow, even Baguska is not a good good out for this. Like, this deck is just crazy. <laughs> but that is actually hilarious. No way. I so did not something... think of that. That's something that people got to be prepared for is the Scareclaw one. Yeah, it's seen as the bad one, but... When you're under Baguska, it's pretty good. <laughs> and again, it's searchable. It's you can special summon it from the deck for free, just like that. You can revive back. You can revive back from the graveyard and banished with birth. It's very easy to access. If you summon Baguska, you're not you're not good yet. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I just wanted to get your take on like the Ashizus, just because like you know I, it opened up a whole new perspective for me. I didn't play as many defensive cards. I was just playing like three Super Poly, three Talents, and one Druus Worm. And orange light, of course. But um, and it, I, my friend told me you're gonna lose the bestials, and I, it didn't necessarily happen. You just have to be able to like outplay like your opponent, like based on the mills, and just have like yeah. and win win the interactions really. And I was just wondering, you know, like I wonder if like that's actually how tier elements is gonna be moving forward. You know, we just kind of cut down on bestials. Don't really need that many defensive cards. Like maybe play like tasking and talents. L let me say something. Uh, Bestials play into tasking a lot. So oh, yeah. if if you do that, uh, they can go tasking, search instant fusion. You don't want that uh, to happen against you at all. And post game one, it can arguably get even worse if they get D barrier or like, I don't know, something else. Like if you're playing Kashtira and you get like different dimension ground, that's also very bad. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Um, now, I said that was the last thing, but I do have one more thing for you because it just okay. crossed my mind. How do you feel about Ghost Reaper Winter Cherries? Because I feel like this is a very, might be a potential good option because Cherries doesn't play as hard in the tasking because they're not adding a card. They just have to set it and can't activate it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you do play the Arise Heart in your extra deck, you know, you can rip the Arise Heart from the Kashtira matchup, which granted, you know, they might have instances where they can add it back. But at the same time, that's going to be like probably in the instance of a grind game, if I had to guess. Yeah, uh, Ghost Reaper is very, very interesting. I'm actually a big fan of this card. Obviously against Tier Lamans, if you can remove their Kid Kalos and they don't play the, uh, the Crime, because they might just start siding the Crime instead of main decking it since... 
people are now going to start playing the meta noise in order to counter Kashtira. Oh, so that's yeah. something that, again, yeah, you have to understand because uh, people might start playing into Ghost Reaper even more. And if that happens, Ghost Reaper becomes drastically better. Now, one thing that I do have to double check, Ghost Reaper says you discard this card, right? You don't send it from the hand to the grave. I'm pretty sure. Right. So, you, you, so you can use it under Shifter. That's very important, uh, which makes it even better. And... I would not main deck the card. I would I would still side deck it, but I think it's a it's a great card. In the OCG, they were side decking. Uh, they were main decking it. That's yeah. ridiculous. That's what happens when Flunderies was just trash over there. Like the field spells at one, the wind bar barrier statue is at like at zero right now. It's R.I.P. to the birds. Yeah, yeah, big rip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know. So I just wanted to get your take on that, and I do think uh, meta noise will probably see. You know. It's a, probably going to be a staple moving forward because of Cash Tira. But it's also pretty decent against other matchups too, you know, just in my own testing. Um, but yeah. I I played it at YCS Rio and I topped with it. Like, it's, it's a good card. Yeah, <laughs> it's, absolutely. It it's a fusion too. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, exactly. It foolishes from the deck to the grave. I mean, why not, right? It doesn't do anything bad. I am a big fan of that card. So I definitely yeah, agree. Yeah. But yeah, you know... Um, was there anything, you know, that you wanted to touch on before we conclude? Uh, I think I covered everything I had to talk about. So, yeah. Okay. If you if you guys have anything else in the, you know, watching this video, let us all know in the comment section. And uh, we'll try to, like, think about, you know, the format even more and potentially get you back with uh, what we maybe uh, discovered from uh, more recent testing. Absolutely. Well, um, make sure you check out Yassine's, uh, all his information down below in the description. Uh, he makes a lot of great content and it's very valuable, you know, for learning in the community, especially, you know, if you're just getting into Yu-Gi-Oh, this is like the perfect resource for you. And um, yeah, with all that being said, Yassine, I just wanted to say it's been a pleasure and yeah. Uh, any you know, last words mine? before we conclude? The pleasure is mine. Thank you so much, Brett. And everybody watching this video, go subscribe to Brett's channel right now. Absolute MVP. He's the best. Smash thank the like you. button as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hey, it's been a pleasure. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.